Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Did You Know? So many young Nigerians have achieved a lot, however, they are not being celebrated within the country. Joining me today on today's discussion is none other than Hassan Belloden Tata. Hassan Belloden Tata is the CEO of Raven and Macau, and he started his business on a hospital bed, subhanAllah, while going through a bone marrow transplant. He has also led more than 42,000 youth across uh, Manchester, and he's going to be our guest for today. Stay tuned, and we will be right back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa alaikum salam. Bro, how you doing? Uh, alhamdulillah. Mashallah, alhamdulillah. good to have you on the show. Uh, thank you for having me. You're the me. very it's first that I spoke to you. I told you I want to know your story entirely. Yes. And alhamdulillah, today you're on the show. How do you feel being on the Did You Know show? Um, I feel excited. Really? But also, I... <laughs> I don't feel like, you know, um, you know, this is more of a conversation rather than an interview. No, I'm not going to answer, I, I see your guest. <laughs> I see your guest. Worry. I get with this one, this, this is, this is, one is <laughs> going to be so different. Yes. This is more of a discussion, getting Definitely. to know your story and, you know, for yeah. it to inspire myself and a lot of people out there. Definitely. You know, yes. you, you, alhamdulillah, you've been able to achieve a lot at a very young age. How old are you now? I am, um, yes, actually. 25? <laughs> nope. Less. 21? 22. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> May Allah put baraka in your age. Um, Amazingly, 22. Yeah. And you know, you've had a beautiful uh, yani life story and I've read about you, I've read what you've done. And what really fascinated me a lot or what really made me become so amazed with what you've done is the fact that you were a sickler and you had a bone marrow transplant, right? You know, just before I go to my next question, let's talk about that phase in your life. Yeah. Before you had the bone marrow surgery, how did you feel? Um, well, um, right before I had the surgery, right. there was actually, I actually said I wasn't going through it anymore. You're not going to go through it again no. anymore? Why? <laughs> I just said, you know, because um, the, legally the doctors have to explain to you, you oh. know, the risks of um, of it and i was only 12 years old then wow and um you know they they explained the risks that this is 50 50. 50 percent right. might be successful 50 percent it won't be successful so i was really scared that you know i was going to die yes, you know, it wasn't going to be successful yeah and um and just actually just before maybe like a year before i you know, I went to that stage where I was going to have the transplant. Mm -hmm. I lost my little brother. Oh my! Yeah, who was three years old to the same disease. Ooh. Yeah, so actually, I was I was very very scared at that time. So that's why I said I just don't want to you go have through to be it scared. anymore. Yeah. Subhanallah. What what motivated you to go through it? Uh, my mom. Your mom. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Amazing. Mom. What did she say? Yeah, you know, she she just um, you know she she was straight with me. She was very. Um, she said, look. You know, if you go through it now, you mm -hmm. know, you have a shot at life, basically. You yeah. know, you have, um, even though it's 50%, but that's 50% of, like, you know, a normal life. Yes, if you yeah. don't go through it now, you know, your whole life would be in and out of the hospital, mm. you know. And at that time, the doctors, um, you know, they said that my life expectancy was just 20 years old. Wow. So now I'm 22, alhamdulillah, but, alhamdulillah. you know, but, you know, if I didn't, hadn't gone uh, ahead with it, you know, it would have been just, uh, you know, our, our, subhanallah, our yeah. mothers are really amazing. Yeah. I love the fact that she told you plain black, you definitely. have to go through it, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, you, you know, I had my other auntie who heard that I was, I was trying to pull up. She just looked at me. She was like, you know, she's quite strict. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, you don't package you because you don't like, <laughs> um, because you know, um, like they're, they're the ones at the end of the day always suffering, always going to the sure, hospital, sure. always taking care of sure. you. It's sure. like, if you don't do it, okay, why don't I'm gonna yeah, plug you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do I was it. Like, definitely go. Well, Osmanla, I really understand how you felt that for the fact that you lost your brother and now you're, mm. you're gonna have a surgery and you were really scared. You know, did that build your connection to your maker? Like, you know, what, how did you become closer to your maker? Definitely. Um, I think, you know, my, um, my mom, she's very, very, she's actually a muallima, she teaches oh, Quran, and, you know, she's, she's very, very um, kind of religious, mm. and, um, and she, she's, that's, that's, that's like the, um, 
you know that's like my my main um, kind of motivation mm-hmm. you know she's always you know she had complete faith in Allah that everything was going to be successful and everything, everything was good and she was you know she read Quran every single day that we were in the hospital you know she prayed and um, alhamdulillah in the whole of the you know the people that were going through the transplant at that time mine was the most successful mm. alhamdulillah so, and i think you know it has a lot to do with that the prayers and everything so just as if allah gave you a second chance definitely subhanallah subhanallah <laughs> it's really amazing yeah. so after the surgery when you were on your sick bed at that moment mm-hmm. what were you doing like what came to your mind you know you were still in the hospital how, how long did you spend in the hospital um in isolation without going out or anything yeah. straight it was two months two months yeah so Because within that period of two months, what did you do did you come up with anything like any ideas Yeah, you know, at that time, um we, you know, there's this things called called a play specialist, uh. right? So it's basically um people employed by the hospital. They have, they, they 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 specialize in playing with children and oh, making right. sick children <laughs> yeah. and making them better. And then there's also these uh, these uh like school you continue with your school even when you're in the hospital. Mm. So um so you know there's uh, so they come to your room you know when you're feeling okay you know you do your maths your english so you don't miss out on education completely yeah, while you're yeah. in the hospital but then um i really um, so they brought you know they bring you laptop and you know things to keep you busy not just mm-hmm. you know in isolation and that's when i really um i i realized um e-commerce wow. and, and ebay and at first it was just you know i was experimenting and i mm. wanted to see Um I wanted to sell my old phone. I sold my phone <laughs> and I got another phone. Um and then that's really how how um how I really got into like I saw the potential if you like in you digital know, marketing in in e-commerce first yeah. and then later on it uh, went on to be in um, digital marketing. You know subhanallah you run one of the most successful companies on digital marketing I would say but I'm trying to get exactly what you're doing your digital marketing are you focusing yeah. on just you know uh, optician and the likes of it yeah. or are you also <laughs> focusing generally on digital marketing? Yeah actually you know um when we first started um it was just gen- generic digital marketing uh-huh. so we were doing it for different industries right. um real estate schools you know and so on and so forth but now um we're just concentrating on optical um and glasses mm. and uh, we're more of an outsourcing company so uh, businesses in the UK that outsource it to us here in Nigeria and oh. we get uh, we get the the job done Where in Nigeria in Kano or Abuja Yeah in Kano In Kano Yeah wow. it's very very unusual <laughs> very Every time I say you know tech business uh, people think it's Lagos or Abuja mm. but when they hear it's Kano um, you know they're very So you surprised. have people that work for you Yeah How many staff do you have at the moment Um currently there's eight people Eight staff Yeah yeah Under your payroll <laughs> You got a big be part of your payroll. <laughs> no, you're too big for me. <laughs> I can't afford it. Mashallah, yeah. what well, the name of your company Raven and Raven and Macau. Macau. Yeah. You now I was actually saying Mackay. But <laughs> well, it's Macau. Yeah. You know, yeah. how did you come about the name? So the name is um, Raven is a bird. Oh. Macau is also a bird. Ah. So Raven is um, is uh, a, a very is one of the most um, intelligent birds. Hmm. So um, and then Macau from its colors is like a parrot and it's a very creative bird mashallah. so intelligence plus creativity Ooh. raven and macau mashallah <laughs> and also you know um the the the, the raven mm-hmm. um is like the other co-founder who yeah. is a more technical person he's oh. an optician oh really um yeah and I'm more of the you know creative person you know and then yeah but you know that one came after but the main uh definition is uh, how it came about yeah was um because of the two birds and the qualities of those birds as well nah. they're very interesting did you did you have birds before no Just but i've always them. loved birds ah. <laughs> yeah um and ravens actually you know in they 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 used to use them to send messages and since ah. what we're doing is social media yeah. digital marketing you know it, It goes amazing. hand in hand. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. How has it been working with a lot of nine young Nigerians like yourself? You yeah. know, you're very young, right? And you have eight people that work under you. Yeah. So most definitely these eight people are people that are above your age, right? Yeah. Like maybe twice, once, you know. <laughs> how do you have an interpersonal skill in dealing with them? Like your management, how do you manage them? Yeah. Um actually, you know, in terms of age is something that i've removed you know um, a long time ago like i don't you removed it from your head yeah i've removed it because so you you were like you know i know i'm 22 but nah 
I'm 50. <laughs> You know, actually, yeah. you know, uh, I was looking back, uh, I was looking at my life right now, you mm-hmm. know, and the closest, my closest friends are like married. <laughs> They're wow. 35, 30, yeah. you know, and I don't really have, um, I don't, I don't really have um, friends, are friends my age. Yeah. You know, I have a friend that's like 56 um, and he's, he, you know, we talk all the time. He's calling me his best friend and everything, mm. you know, so that's like, and then my business partner is like almost uh, 45 as well. So I don't really know. Like, um, I think, you know, based on my experiences, I've gotten used to, you know, working with, uh, with people a lot older than me. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it can be very challenging okay, yeah, because people, you know, think, oh, what's this kid? <laughs> you know, it's just, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, it's not about, uh, I always, I don't try to play the boss. You know, in, in my mm. in my business, you know, everyone is a friendly atmosphere. So you know, we're all, fr- yeah. you know, as long as you do your role, you know, you get the job done, you know, results at the end of the day is all that matters. Yeah. And, uh, and we don't really, uh, you know, we all joke around and, you know, we play around. We don't take life too seriously in that <laughs> sense. <laughs> well, yeah. Shala, this is really amazing. And mm-hmm. I think it's really effective when it comes to work, mm-hmm. uh, where you have people that work with you and you have a very good atmosphere where everyone is comfortable to work. Yeah. You know, I think we've passed the age whereby you find people say, you know, I'm the boss and the boss is coming and everyone is running around uh, and then no. they just put this together. <laughs> no. I don't think it makes really people really effective and no. the like servant. No. You know, amazingly, before you came back to Nigeria, you've been doing a lot of advocacy in the UK and everything. Yeah. What led to that? Um, so um, it, it started when I was in, in college doing my A-levels mm-hmm. and I started the big club. I realized, you know, I, I like talking <laughs> and um, and I was quite okay at it, yeah. you know. Um, so also, um, you know, I, I was, and then, so yeah, I went into the school's debating club. I got elected. Um, and then I was then elected to represent, um, you know, the whole school in the Manchester Youth Council. Really? Yeah. And then from there, I was elected to represent the whole of Manchester, wow. the Greater Manchester Combined Authority Whoa. for youth, yeah, young Allah. people. So you were leading a lot of young people? Uh, yes, I, I would say, yeah. Did you ever want to become a leader or it just came to you at that moment? No, it just, it just happened. You you know, it's not something it? you said, <laughs> yeah, you embrace, you know. You know, actually, um, just this simple talking, I used to be very scared of it. Even, you know, mm. when in class you'll be asked to, to speak and you're yeah. just like, please don't pick, <laughs> please don't pick me, please don't pick. So that was me. Mm. You know, I didn't, um, I didn't really like talking at all. I didn't like doing anything, you yeah. know, uh, putting myself out there. But then, you know, the more you do it, the more you become better at it. Mm. And then that's... I just kept putting myself out there, even though I was scared, even though I didn't, you know, I didn't want to do it. But I knew, you know, to grow, yeah. I needed to put myself in these mm. um, positions and places. You know, it's, it's amazing that, you know, uh, you, you've been able to achieve this in just uh, this period of time. And what's really amazing is that you, despite the fact that you had went through the bone marrow transplant and everything, you still had that courage. Mm. Are there any, is there any moment in your life where you felt that, you know, uh, you had you had inferiority complex mm. in dealing with people, or you felt that, you see, I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I don't have any, you know, I don't, I'm not focused on this. I want to change exactly what I'm doing. Do you have that challenges with you? Um, <clears throat> you know, I've always been confident when it comes to business. Um, I, my first business was um, when I was 10 years old. Really? And then there was this, like, uh, madrasa opposite my house. It was, yeah. like, a, a school, evening school, um, and a mosque opposite my house. And I started selling sweets and everything. <laughs> and um, sweets, biscuits, indomie. And at the age like, of 10? Yeah, at the age of Brother, 10. you love money. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a lot of people thought. Uh, but, you know, I just, um, I just had that passion, mm. you know. Um, and so from then, you know, Everyone within my family has always encouraged me. And, you know, they always said, you know, this is, you're going to be a, a businessman. You're going wow. to. So I've always had it at the back of my mind. So they were, they were not telling you, you need to focus on school. You need to focus on school. Mm. They were supporting you in your business. Definitely. I was, I was um, definitely supported. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, this is amazing. Yeah. You know, a lot of young people out there who are sicklers, and uh, I've interacted with a lot of them. Mm. And I've been to school where I've met sicklers and I've asked them questions. Some of them will be like, you know, I feel I'm not going to make it. I feel I can't, you know, achieve anything. So they live a life without even having like a deeper purpose. Yeah. What message 
do you have for such kind of young people? Um, you know, you have to always um, try your best and leave the rest to, mm -hmm. to Allah. And, um, and there's, you know, you, like, even when I was a sickler, for example, um, I used the opportunity that I couldn't be going to school because most of the time I was out of school. Right. And um, so I used that opportunity to do some things that I can do at home, which was, um, which was this uh, small business, business that I started. Mm. But definitely, you know, it's very, very difficult. It's mm. very difficult. But, um, but I, I remember what people used to tell me, um, you know, when, when I was in crisis or I was in the hospital, you know, you're lucky, man. I was like, what do you mean I'm lucky? No, why? <laughs> what do you mean I'm lucky? Because all your sins are being erased, yes, you know. Sir. And, um, and you know, you, you have like a, an easy ticket to, to Jannah. Mm. So, so that's also, you know, everything happens for a reason. Mm. And Allah puts you in certain positions to make you stronger. Mm. And I think, you know, most of the sickness I know, yeah. you know, are like one of the most strongest and resilient people. You know, because they don't, you know, they don't really let um, those obstacles. That's how I felt, you know, there was, um, like, I was shackled. Mm. I, was, I was in chains. I couldn't, I wanted to do so much. You know, I wanted to do so much, but I really couldn't um, because of my health. So, but, you know, um, once you, the shackles, um, you, you can't let the, your health be the shackles. You have to unshackle your mind, mm. uh, and then everything is possible. Subhanallah. Yeah. Subhanallah. This is amazing. You know, we're going to just take a short break, and okay. we'll be right back. <laughs> Are there viewers? We're going to take this short break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. As you all know, we have been discussing with an amazing guest who is none other than Hassan Bello and Tata. And we've been hearing about beautiful stories about him and how he is a source of motivation to a lot of people out there. Habibi, welcome back to the show. Thank you. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <I'm good. laughs> so, hope this is not an interview. This is more of a discussion. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm enjoying our discussion. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. May Allah make yeah. life easy for us. I mean, I mean. You know, I know you've met a lot of amazing people from celebrities and uh, you've met a lot of Mashaya. Uh, you've also met, uh, for a lot of people who love sport, mm. you know, their biggest dream is for them to meet uh, David Beckham, right? Yes. And you've met David Beckham, right? Yes. He's a celebrity. Were you starstruck or how did you feel? Um, actually, um, how I, I didn't know first, um, mm. who I was going to meet. They ah. just told us for security reasons, they can't tell us Disclose. that information. Um, we worked on this, uh, fashion project, yeah. um, where it was all about identity mm. and things like that. Um, so we got to meet him through that project and then, you know, as soon as it was a complete surprise because we kept guessing who might this be. Could, you know, how high profile is this person that they're not even telling us his name because of security and wow. etc. But, um, you know, I was completely uh, amazed. I was, I was so happy. Um, I was surprised. And, you know, our mouths were just wide open. We couldn't say anything or do. We just froze. You know, because I, I, I'm a United <laughs> fan. Oh, mashallah. You know, yeah. I, you know subhanAllah, when, when, when I met you in Kano, yeah. myself, Sheikh Asimah Lakim, uh, what's his name? What's his brother's name? Uh, Swan Life, forgot his name, but John he was Fontaine. John Fontaine, <laughs> yeah. right? When we met, the way when you saw Asma like him, I could see the facial expression. Was it yeah. like that as well? Definitely, <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was because you know, it's something that I I listen to, I see them on YouTube, uh, mm. on podcasts, and things like that, just to see them live and in Kano. Mashallah, you know, it's something <laughs> amazing. Uh, yeah, did you, did you tell your mama about it? Yeah, what did she say? Oh, she was happy. Ashallah. <laughs> what, what did she say we do about the Beckham one? <laughs> she was, <laughs> let's just call it neutral. Uh, very neutral. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mashallah, may Allah make life easy for us. Yeah. You know, uh, going on, on our discussion, you know, you, what kind of sport do you do now? Despite your, your, you know, for the fact that you've had the bone marrow transplant, can you do any kind of sport or you're regulated? Usually, um, you know, I can do any sports, but unfortunately for me personally, I um, I used to play football, mm. but um, I have this um, complication with my hip um, mm. during the transplant, so Ooh. I can't really be doing any 
sports to do with legs. Uh, but uh, apart from that, I do cycling. Cycling doesn't really affect it much. It's okay. just running and football that I can't really do. Yeah. But apart from that, anything else. But you miss it. I do. <laughs> I really do. Inshallah. May Allah make life easy. I mean, you know, a lot of parents out there, or let's say couples, right, who want to get married, uh, they go through this idea of, okay, if I get married to you, well, there's a possibility I will give birth to sickle cell. Your capacity, you've gone through the pain, you've gone through the surgery, and how life has been for you for the long, for, you know, for the long time of your life. Mm. What advice do you have for such kind of couples? Yeah, um, you know, I've seen it, um, you know, uh, a few times where couples, they've even gone and get tested. Mm. You know, they, they know the risks. They're, they're both AS, but because of love, you know, they would say they would, um, they would still go ahead with the marriage. Mm. Um, you know, you can't really, you, you're not in their shoes, so you can't really judge them much. But, um, you know, it's a very, very risky move, in my opinion. And mm. you're not only, you know, it's, um, it's not fair on the children. Oh, wow. You know, because before, uh, when, when, like, our parents got married and everything, there wasn't such... They didn't know, have such opportunities There, there for wasn't tests. such opportunities yeah. to yeah. get tested. So, you know, you can understand. Mm. Uh, but now, there's no excuse. There's right. no excuse. You're bringing, um, you know, children into this life. Mm. You need to make sure that um, that uh, you do, you know, everything. Um, um, you know, they they won't be suffering for, yeah. for their life because of your your Mystic. decisions. You mm. know, mm. it's um, it's a very difficult decision to make. But I think you know, uh, once you know, and once like there's people that, for example, if my sisters were ever, they will they will never do that because they know what. They my went mom through. went through yeah. and you know what i went through so because they've been in that shoes mm. they will never ever risk that but there's people that don't really know uh much they're not mm. really exposed to to you know the difficulties of that yeah. so that's why i think most of the so i think couples need to know that their unborn children have a right upon the kind of decision they make definitely yeah yeah it's beautiful having you on the show brother uh, thank you thank you so much for coming on the show to uh, share your beautiful story thank you so much for having me thank you so much yeah, right. all right viewers we've come to the end of today's episode to all the sicklers out there you still have hope and you can achieve so much you can achieve so much have faith in your maker and everything is gonna be fine this is did you know until we meet in the next episode assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh